Mariology in the Roman Catholic Church is the in-depth theological study of the role and life of Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. Mary is venerated as the Blessed Virgin and Mother of God in the Roman Catholic Church, with dignity ascribed to her infinite goodness from God. The study of Mariology is concerned not only with the life of Mary, but also with the honor given to her in daily prayers, Christian art, music, and architecture. The development of Mariology continues through various theological writings, papal encyclicals, as well as the influence of the spiritual experiences of Catholics around the world. The Church teaches that Mariology cannot be separated from Christology, as Mary and Jesus have an inseparable relationship in the Catholic faith. Mary develops a deeper understanding of who Christ is and what he did. Christology without Mary is wrong in the view of the Roman Catholic Church, because it is theology that is not based on the full revelation of Scripture. Early Christians and many saints focused on this parallel interpretation. The popes highlighted the intimate relationship between the dogmas concerning Mary and the full acceptance of the dogmas of Christology. The Roman Catholic Church's Marian doctrines, including the four main dogmas of the Mother of God, perpetual virginity, immaculate conception, and assumption of Mary, emphasize Mary's holiness and role in the salvation of humanity through Jesus Christ. Mariology is not only a formal theological subject, but also an important part of the devotional life of Catholics, reflected in the practice of Marian prayers, pilgrimages to holy places, and special commemorations to Mary throughout the liturgical year. The history of Mariology dates back to the first century with early Christians' veneration of martyrs and Mary as the second Eve who righted Eve's wrongs. In the fifth century, the title Theotokos for Mary was affirmed, and the teaching of the Assumption of Mary's body into heaven began to spread. In the Middle Ages, Mariology flourished, with many churches dedicated to Mary, including the great cathedrals of Europe. Controversy over the Immaculate Conception arose, but the concept that Mary was free from original sin from her creation was increasingly accepted. The Protestant Reformation opposed Catholic Mariology, seeing veneration of Mary as a diversion from the role of Christ, which destroyed many Marian religious artworks. During the Baroque period, Mariology was defended by the Catholic Church, with support from popes such as Pope Paul V and Pope Clement XI. However, the Age of Enlightenment challenged Catholic theology, including Mariology, with its emphasis on rationalism and rejection of devotions that had no scriptural basis. In the 19th century, Mariology experienced a revival, especially with the promulgation of the dogma of Immaculate Conception by Pope Pius IX in 1854. Pope Leo XIII was also known as the Rosary Pope because of his encyclicals promoting the prayer of the Rosary. The views of the saints in Roman Catholic Mariology were very influential in shaping the doctrine of Mary's central role in God's plan of salvation. Some of the important saints in the development of Mariology include Saint Irenaeus, Saint Ambrose, and Saint Bernard of Clairvaux. Saint Irenaeus was the first church father to develop the full concept of Mariology, portraying Mary as playing an important role in human salvation. Saint Ambrose emphasized Mary's virginity and her role as the Mother of God, the influence of which extended to his disciples such as Saint Augustine. Saint Augustine affirmed Mary as eternally virgin and full of grace, protecting the concept of Mary as the Mother of God before the Council of Ephesus. Patriarch Cyril of Alexandria is famous for championing the title Mother of God for Mary, especially in the Council of Ephesus. Pope Leo the Great connected Mariology with Christology, emphasizing that veneration of Mary is essential to understanding Christ as both God and man. Mariology as a folk theology often develops from the devotions of Catholics who come from below, in contrast to other Roman Catholic theologies that usually come from the church hierarchy. Some notable examples are the spiritual experiences and visions of simple individuals, such as Saint Juan Diego who experienced an apparition of Mary on Tepeyac Hill in 1531, which went on to influence millions of Catholics in America. Another example is Saint Bernadette Subiru in Lourdes, France, who in 1858 reported a vision of a woman dressed in white asking for the construction of a church. Although initially rejected, this vision was later accepted by the church, and Lourdes became an important pilgrimage site. 
The apparitions at Fatima of Lucia dos Santos and her two cousins in 1917 also became one of the significant mariological events, where their report was eventually recognized by the Church and honored by popes, including Pope John Paul II. Saint Marguerite Marie Alacoque is another example of devotion to Mary that is closely linked to Christology and adoration of Jesus Christ. While her visions were initially rejected, her devotion to the Sacred Heart was eventually officially accepted by the Church, and her visions were referenced by Pope Pius XI in his encyclical. Mariette Biko of Benoes, Belgium, also reported an apparition of Mary in 1933, which was later recognized by the Church. Folk devotions such as the Holy Rosary and lay organizations that supported these devotions, such as our Queen's Rosary Makers, show how the census fidelium, or the voice of the faithful, influenced the development of Mariology within the Roman Catholic Church. The influence on the Roman Catholic Church shows that although many individuals initially had difficulty in spreading the Mariology devotion, the Church eventually recognized and embraced this faith. For example, the dogma of Immaculate Conception declared by Pope Pius IX was based not only on scripture, but also on the census fidelium, or the faith of the faithful developed over the long term. This view also supported the dogma of the Assumption of Mary into Heaven by Pope Pius XII, who invoked papal infallibility, a significant step that demonstrated the power of folk theology in influencing church dogma. Mariology in the 20th century was filled with enthusiasm for Mary, which reached its peak with the declaration of the dogma of the Assumption and the recognition of Mary as the mother of the Church by the Second Vatican Council. Pope Pius XII played an important role in encouraging this devotion, for example by dedicating Russia to the Sacred Heart of Mary and establishing the Marian Year in 1954. He also canonized several important figures who showed strong devotion to Mary. The Second Vatican Council summarized Catholic doctrine on Mary in Chapter 8 of Lumen Gentium, which affirmed Mary's pivotal role in salvation history. However, the hope of making Mary the Mediatrix and Corredemptrix was not dogmatically fulfilled in this council, although this concept continues to be supported by various papal encyclicals and theological figures. The concept of the Mediatrix and Corredemptrix emphasizes Mary's role in the mediation of grace and redemption. Although not yet an official dogma, support for this idea continues to grow, with attempts by some cardinals and church figures to encourage the Pope to establish the dogma. Pope John Paul II, in his encyclical, Redemptoris Mater, affirmed Mary's intercessory role in the relationship between humanity and Christ. Corredemptrix refers to Mary's role in penance, where she participates indirectly but importantly in the process. This concept is not new, Church Father Irenaeus referred to Mary as the causa salutis or cause of our salvation. Although Mary plays an important role, she is not considered equal to Christ in penance, because Christ is the only Redeemer. Pope Pius X and Pope Benedict XV began to outline this role more formally, with Pope Pius XII also affirming Mary's role as a partner in redemption in his encyclical. Ecumenical implications suggests that some Mariologists believe that the recognition of Mary needs to be toned down for ecumenical dialogue, especially with Protestants. Cardinal Leo Skefczyk considers that the Second Vatican Council's document on Mary may be a compromise that reduces the richness of the Catholic faith to bridge the various positions, although it has not been entirely successful. Mother of the Church became the official title for Mary after the title change of the Vatican Council II document by Pope John XXIAI. Despite some resistance, Pope Paul VI officially announced this title, and Pope John Paul II later reiterated and emphasized this title as part of the plan of human salvation. Pope Benedict XVI explained the relationship between Mariology and ecclesiology, emphasizing that the Church and Mary mirror each other in salvation history. He regretted that the union between the Church and Mary is often covered up. The Center for Mariological Research has made significant progress since 1950, with the establishment of institutions such as the Academia Mariana Salesiana, Centro Mariano Montfortano, and the Marianum, which focus on researching and developing teachings on Mary. These institutions contribute to the academic understanding of Mariology and theological training in this area. The journey of Mariology in the Roman Catholic Church reflects a profound theological and spiritual evolution. 
From the early recognition of Mary's role as mother and mediator in penance, to the establishment of important dogmas such as the Immaculate Conception and the Assumption of Mary's Body into Heaven, the understanding of Mary has evolved significantly. Although controversies and theological debates continue, especially regarding the concepts of co-redemptrix and mediatrix, these developments demonstrate the Church's efforts to integrate Marian devotion within the context of salvation and ecclesiology. The Second Vatican Council and modern popes such as John Paul II and Benedict XVI have attempted to bridge theological and ecumenical differences by placing renewed emphasis on Mary's role as Mother of the Church. Academic research encouraged by Pope Pius XII and institutions such as the Marianum strengthened the understanding of Mariology, contributing to more profound teachings and devotions. Overall, the journey of Mariology reflects the Church's efforts to understand and express Mary's role in God's plan of salvation, while facing challenges and dialoguing with other Christian traditions. Mariology is thus not only the study of Mary, but also a reflection of how the Church understands and celebrates the mystery of salvation in the context of history and evolving spirituality.